Stars The Incredibles presents a wealth of themes from the over-obsession of heroism to having an even-keeled perspective on being exceptional. However, there's one thread that weaves the others together, and that's the family dynamics as demonstrated by the Pars. The film's director, Brad Bird, describes the Pars through the powers they possess, starting with the husband and father, Bob. Being the family's patriarch, he holds the physical strength necessary to bear through any conflict. Next, there's Helen, the rubber band that's perpetually stretched in every direction to fulfill her duties as a housewife. Finally, there are the kids, Violet, Dash, and Jack-Jack. Violet, being socially distant from her school peers, literally hides herself from the world with her invisibility. Dash is a ball of energy that leaves dust trails behind, moving from place to place no average person can fathom. Then there's Jack-Jack, the newest member in the family's little mystery box. And together, they are the Pars, staying under the radar for 15 years after the government put the super relocation program in motion. Whether one thinks the structure reeks of patriarchal expectations or it's the best family formation bar none, the Pars are the quintessential nuclear family. Although the definition has expanded, it's a single family unit that consists of a married heterosexual couple and their biological children. Much like the sitcoms of the past, the Pars perform the daily functions of the average nuclear family. The kids attend school, the wife takes care of the household, and the husband clocks into his 9 to 5 to bring home the bacon. However, with this superhero family, there is dysfunction in the mix. To begin, let's center our focus on Helen and Bob's progeny, starting with the extremely energetic 10-year-old wishing to unleash his full potential, Dash. A child's impulsivity is quelled through physically engaging activity. In a study conducted by Garamani et al., it concludes that despite the degree of impulsiveness, introducing physical activities can positively influence a student's cognitive functions, from impulse control to choice selection. In other words, give a kid some time to play and they'll be better for it, essentially allow the world to be their oyster. However, because the society the child belongs to is a bit too skittish in accepting or tolerating what they can do in terms of their powers, they must suppress that aspect of themselves. With keeping that trade underground, the other undesirable features of a person will break through the cracks. For Dash, it's his penchant for troublemaking. Aside from being a disruptive influence in his class, he likes playing pranks on his teacher, almost getting caught on camera placing attack on their seat. He knows it would be an issue for the family if their cover's blown since this is his third time in this predicament. Unfortunately, if there are no alternative outlets for the kid, then they'll make their own fun regardless of the potential risks. Dash tries explaining this to his mom when they have this conversation. None of these problems would manifest if he were allowed to go out for sports. However, Helen can't have any of that lest they want to show up on the radar. With this ball and chain placed around Dash's ankles, it's no wonder he feels his powers weigh him down if he can't let loose and excel at the things he knows he can do. But Bob has the opposite opinion. He's more impressed that Dash can move so quickly that he eluded the camera's gaze. The fact that Dash can even express his abilities despite the trouble he caused, Bob sees it as an admirable thing. Dash may get the praise that comes with using his powers, but it puts him at a crossroads. Dad would love nothing more than for his son to showcase his talents, whereas mom would rather keep things under wraps to avoid the family from being examined under a microscope. How does a kid marry two ideological positions constantly at odds with one another without the wait-and-see approach? The short answer is, they don't. Then again, what's really stopping a curious and energetic 10-year-old that can roll around at the speed of sound from snooping around? Nothing. And he'll swipe both his and Violet's matching costumes, ask the question why would mom try to hide them, and find a way to sneak onto her private jet traveling to a remote island. And once they reach their destination, Helen relays their current situation. We're on a remote island, dad's in trouble, the people on this island are not like the villains you're used to watching on TV, let alone the average people back home. If there's any hint of danger, use your powers. The world Dash is in can now be his oyster. His powers are immediately put to the test when he and Violet separate after the island guards get the jump on them. Once they split, the island becomes, pun intended, his jungle gym. A red blur able to duck and dodge the enemy's attempts to cut him down. Dash even discovers he can run on water. Water. What he perceived at first as a haphazard family vacation turned into a litmus test to prove his excellence, and from doing such a great job away from and back home against the Omnidroid, his mom throws away his shackles and lets him join the track team. If he wanted to, he'd go for the gold, but second place silver is nothing to scoff at either. Next comes Violet, the quiet, timid, and emotionally distressed eldest child. It's difficult enough for a teenager to formulate an individual identity while being inundated with the general malaise of figuring out where one fits in within the ecosystem that is school. British professor of psychology Dr. Blakemore in chapter 3 of her book, Inventing Ourselves, expresses how it's necessary for an adolescent to find the tribe, and to accomplish this goal, observe the cultural norms their classmates follow so that those bonds can be created. Meaning if a teenager can take enough social 
boxes from what they wear and how they act. So participating in the same activities among other things, making friends does not become a hassle. However, if one's attire deviates from the general look of the population, they make no effort at navigating through the social realm outside of longingly gaze at their crush, and on top of that, keep hitting their abilities that divides them further, an anxious person who actively stays out of sight from others is birthed. Keep in mind, the parents are their frame of reference as how to socially interact with the world. Unfortunately, Violet doesn't get much out of it considering both her parents are exposed to the same pressures as far as concealing their powers go, and on the emotional support side of things, Bob is too mentally drained from living his average life as a salary man, and Helen is too busy tending to Jack Jack and dealing with Dash's troublemaking. Plus, while watching both her parents regularly argue, Violet kind of realizes she's left her own devices to solve the problem. But there's nothing to solve, because it's easier to disappear than it is to be seen. The thing is though, she does want to be seen, going as far as criticizing her mother for the way she demands everyone to refrain from using their powers for the sake of the family's safety. Sure, not getting pinged by the government is what's best, however, if the eldest child has no reference point on how to navigate the greater society with this restriction, anything about normalcy that escapes the tongue will be called out as tone deaf. Acting normal is an anxiety inducing chore, Violet wants to remove the mask and be normal. Unfortunately, the way the stage is currently set, she must continue to wear it and play her part. Not only is she plagued with social isolation, there's also the lack of confidence and curiosity. Both feelings stem from her parents' constant arguing. Although Bob and Helen say they're always a team, always united, in Violet's eyes, this sentiment contradicts what they present. The entire dinner scene supports this idea, not to mention their last argument. When both parents are constantly at odds with each other, it doesn't breed confidence in the kids. It only causes eyebrows to be raised. Violet knows why they're arguing on the surface, but doesn't know what else is baked in. When she's put in charge of the house so Helen can search for her husband, she's given vague clues on the matter, but something still seems off. Why is dad in trouble and why is mom leaving the house for either a rescue mission or a manhunt? Strike one. So, she begins probing, questioning her mother about the three costumes she's packing, but is immediately shooed away. Strike two. The mystery begins once Violet uses her powers on her costume and it instantly disappears. Strike three. Now it's time to see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Keeping secrets isn't conducive for any healthy dynamic. Keeping secrets from a teenager that sees some of the writing on the wall and they'll pull out the go-go gadget magnifying glass ready to solve the case. So she and Dash decide to stow away in Helen's borrowed jet. Why? For Violet, it's to piece together what's up with her parents. Even though she hears Helen declare her definite return, there's still a degree of uncertainty considering how she's partially privy to her parents' interpersonal conflict. That's enough reason to get on the case. But how does a social recluse without confidence in the world they know interface with the unknown parts of the map? Quick answer, not too well. When the plane is under missile fire, Violet's assigned to cover the plane with her force field. However, she has never conjured anything of this magnitude since the family can't use their powers in public. Her lack of confidence to use her powers is what causes the plane to go down. Because Violet could not rise to the occasion, she beats herself up over being too weak to effectively do what was asked of her. However, all it takes to build any confidence is a positive push. Helen plants the seed of self-assuredness by filling her in on her potential. Violet has more power than she realizes and when the opportunity presents itself, she'll have it figured out. Like Helen says, it's in her blood. With that little push, it allowed Violet to shift her perspective. She wears her hair back, revealing her face to the world instead of hiding behind it. She practices conjuring force fields in the cave to gain better control, even going as far as covering her brother with a protective force field to block the bullets coming his way. The seed of self-assuredness finally bloomed into confidence. Violet is now capable of contributing to the family's fighting effort to escape the island and subdue the Omnidroid, wreaking havoc in the city. Thanks to the situation and her mother's pep talk, this confidence is translated back into her social life at school. Needless to say, she won't be hiding from the world anymore.